Hi, I'm Vasilis Katsupis. I'm the director of the film Inside. I'm Yoros Karnavas. I'm the producer of the film. Hi, hello. Uh, my name is Leonardo Bigazzi. I'm the curator of the art collection of Inside. Hi, my name is Katie. I'm from the Angelica Film Center. Uh, first, how did kind of this concept of this film really get started? It's easy. It's <laughs> <laughs> here in New York. <laughs> several place and it just you know this uh, views and uh, this um, um, environment uh, got me to this idea like I mean what if I'm getting stuck in this room and uh, you know it's not be able to to live and uh, I have all these uh, you know I can see the whole city around me and people passing by cars and uh, people opposite but uh, I cannot uh, uh, contact anyone. So basically, it was it came from uh, from a situation like this, and uh, I was really intrigued to make the Robinson Crusoe story, but instead of having it in a Lonely Island, to have it in a metropolis like New York. There's so much gorgeous art all over the set. And I wanted to know kind of where the vision came from. And I wanted to know where the idea for like how you curated this very fascinating and beautiful, but also very cohesive storytelling, like through the art that was chosen. Well, first of all, thank you for the for the remarks. Um, I think, first of all, I mean, uh, Vasilis had a very clear vision of how the art should play a very important role in the in the film, I would say the role of the co-protagonist of the film. And so when, when Georgos and, and Vasilis invited me, the, the beginning was really understanding the script, understanding what was their vision and how I could contribute to the narrative of the film through the selection of the works. Because on the one hand, it was about building up uh, the character of the collector, because every collection, every art collection is the direct manifestation of the personality of the of the collector being their passions being their obsessions their love their encounters and on the other hand vasilis always thought about the art collection as a mirror of the psychological breakdown and and the even the physical uh, condition of the of the protagonist of Willem Dafoe of Nemo so we started by bouncing back to each other images visions ideas uh in partly inspired by the script, partly that actually shaped also the, the, the script. So in that sense, I would say this is really the, the product of, of, of the beautiful dialogue that we had with, uh, with Vasilis Georgos and afterwards also with Willem. The film in its own way is kind of an avant-garde art piece reflecting all of the art within it. It was absolutely stunning. So my last question would kind of be, especially considering the some sort of ambiguous ending of the film, what would you want audiences to take away from the film? You really want an answer? <laughs> gonna I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah, it's, no, 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 it's, it's, it's not a matter of spoiler. First of all, I would like to say something on your first question about the idea and about the, you know, how Vasilis came to that. For me, it's very important uh, because, you know, this idea, uh, Vasilis, he has it since, uh, you know, like 10 years. So it's More. it's not, yeah, it's not a COVID uh, film. It's not but, um, you know, you can call it karma or you can call it, you know, um, you know, things are lining. When it was for us, when the whole thing, COVID happened, we were saying, Jesus, I mean, it's, the film can be, first of all, will be extremely relevant, but everybody will also see it. You know, they will all, everybody will think that it's an idea that came uh, out of this uh, confinement, that, you know, this global uh, situation that every, everybody got uh, found himself in. So it's not a COVID film, um, but we were very aware that people look at with this, uh, you know, they, <laughs> it's it's very difficult to, to take it out of people's mind. Um, um, now, about the end, I don't know. I mean, I have a lot of things to say, but I don't think it's... Uh... Even between us, we have different idea what happened in the, at the end. Yeah. 
So I, I love I love the, that we leave it to the audience uh, interpretation mm -hmm. to uh, uh, to what happens to Nemo. To guess or dream or um, contemplate about what happened to this guy after all. So I think it's added value to to to, to a film to have an ambiguous ending and. An ending that you know you can really think, okay, what happened to him? He went out, then he managed to get away with it. He maybe he was, you know, caught. You know, it's 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 uh, for for us. This is uh, part of the beauty of the project. May I add something on that? Um, from an art perspective, I think what is interesting about this film is the questions and relations that we are all asking ourselves after the two years of pandemic. Like, I think we all learned how to live in a different way with what surrounds us uh, in, in our own apartments. Doesn't matter how valuable the, the, the objects and the works that we have on the walls are. And uh, I think and wish that because this film is probably a film that will reach a very wide audience, uh, that there will be, you know, there will be an interest in understanding more about how and which artworks have been selected. I think this is is a is a film that leaves you with a lot of interest in understanding uh, the processes and the different layers behind the the, the um, production of the of the film. Uh, and in that sense, I think it's quite interesting. And then I want to make a joke. If this is a film about karma, if, if you said it's not, uh, you know, it might be karma that brought us here. I hope uh, your next film, Vasilis, is not going to be about a catastrophe because if... <laughs> you never know. <laughs> That's amazing. And I do only have one minute left. Um, so my last question. Why the Macarena? <laughs> oh, um, yes. I mean, in the beginning, it we wanted. Um, I'm not. I'm going to say, but uh, you know, we wanted a, a song that it sounds ridiculous a bit. You know, I, I, so I mean, I don't. But uh, doing research, it's it's uh, um, it has a very deep meaning, Macarena. Not the lyrics, not the um, the music, but the way it is used by the American army as in psyop operations in Iraq. So the American army used the Macarena song in order to befriend to befriend uh, uh, women and children uh, when they were occupying um, when they were doing. Uh, uh, Operations in the in villages and uh, small cities, so they were blasting uh, Macarena, and the soldiers were doing the dance, and with the kids and the women to show them that they are not threatening, they are uh, they, they are not in danger, and all this stuff. And also, I think they also did it again. The National Guard here uh, in U.S. they did it in the um, they used it in the, in the protests in. Um, in the when there were Black Lives Matter protests uh, two years ago, I think. So it's I, I think it's a way that the house tries to befriend him. Um, it used the, in the in the same somehow way as uh, it's extremely uh, it's extremely ironic as, it is a, as, ironic, as a yeah. film, you know, especially when you contradict it with a situation. Um, actually, it was the first idea, and it stayed till the end. You know, that's. The, that's the idea. That's the that's the that's the track. That's the song, and it works uh, so well. And afterwards, we found out. Yes. About, well, you know, Vasilis was uh, digging in YouTube and said, "Look, man, look all these videos. It's crazy. I mean, and it's so nice. You know, when you make a um, a choice for something, and then you see there are so many other layers about this choice that they can add, you know, meaning or." make you think about things and that's happening often in the film oh. yeah yeah okay that's happening often in the film there are so many layers in many many scenes and um, and shots that uh, it depends how much you dig in the film and what you see you can find uh, symbolisms and thank you guys so much uh have a wonderful premiere tonight bye thank you, Katie. bye bye thank you. bye bye, bye. Hi, I'm Katie from the Angelica Film Center. Hi, Katie.
Hi, um, thank you so much for taking the time uh, yeah. to speak with me um, about Inside, which was so phenomenal. I was absolutely blown away. I felt like the whole movie really centered and hinged on performance. And I felt like it was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, right. So I would love to hear kind of what drew you to the project, um, how you really, because it's such a psychological kind of endeavor, what drew you into this project, to this character, and then kind of how you went about like your process of like preparing for this and really being in this role. Okay. Um, you know, what attracted me was really the premise is very good. And I knew it wasn't going to be a traditional movie and there aren't traditional scenes. I don't have traditional scene partners. My scene partners are the space, works of art, objects. Um, it's basically a solitary performance. I knew also that there was uh, the script was a blueprint but we were going to have to invent stuff. The film would really be made as we sh shot it. We had a very strong narrative, you know, arc to uh, deliver, let's say, but there were many spaces between those events that were very clear in the screenplay that we had to flesh out. And that was a lot of the creative work and a lot of the inhabiting uh, when we were on site. So it was, it was an opportunity. It, it's not a film that uh, I've done before. Nothing, there was nothing familiar about it. Uh, and also the premise and the, uh, what happens in the film is very evocative. Many, many themes that interest me come into play. Amazing. I, I'm trying to remember all your questions. And, and as far as preparation, one interesting thing, at least for me, is I didn't, pre I didn't prepare because it really wasn't important who this guy is before the event. And the event starts as soon as he gets locked in. And that's where for our, for us, for me, his life starts because he is defined. He is, he is um, expressed by what we see him do. And that's, that's really the performance. Amazing. Thank you so much. I think that was our time, but um, wow. yeah. It goes fast. So fast. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking with me. Um, have a wonderful day. <laughs> All right, you as well.